But before uh, we get started with that, I want to talk about, uh, I'll write down what we're going to do. Graph one period. We're actually going to end up grabbing more than one, uh, but we'll start with one period of Now when we graph functions, we're going to use x for the horizontal coordinate, y for the vertical coordinate, just like normal. And we'll start with the cosine function. So the first issue we're going to have is that x, you see x here twice, this x refers to the x coordinate on the graph. The problem is cosine is defined uh, with its input as an angle, not as an x coordinate. So x coordinate, it's measured on the x axis. Theta is an angle measure, and it measures rotation. So what we've done up to this point, we've been concerned with rotating. So this switch we're going to have to make. Uh, what we're going to do to accomplish this is uh, graph w with what I call the clueless method. So here's the clueless method. Now for many of you, this is the only method you've ever learned. Uh, what does the clueless method do? Well, it's the same exact way uh, any calculator or computer graph graphing program works your plotting points. The only difference between your calculator and uh, plotting and making a graph in you is your calculator is going to use probably whatever the number of pixels on the screen, it'll plot that many points. So maybe it plots 800 points depending on how big your screen is. Uh, if I plot a full screen on this, I think that would be uh, 1080 by 1920, something like that. It would be a lot of, uh, a lot of pixels it would plot or a lot of points. So. If, if I plotted full screen on this computer, it would plot around a thousand points. We don't have that kind of time, so we're going to plot. Uh, we're going to focus on five key points. Uh, but before we get there, the clueless method, you're going to make a table and you're going to plot points. All right, so here we go. Our input. Our input is going to be x. Our output, we're going to cos whatever that value is. All right, we don't know too many. Uh, we have to be careful about our x values. For example, if I just drop one here, what is cosine of one? I have no idea. Uh, remember, measuring in radians here. So what's one? Uh, so 6.28 something something is approximately a full rotation, but one is not uh, not a number we know about. So we're going to start with something easy, zero. Now I'm going to put the next smallest value, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. And now I'm going to cosine all of these. Now, this comes down to uh, how well you have the unit circle memorized. So, co zero is one, uh, square root of three over two, one over square root of two, one half, and one. So, here is our, of course, this is our y value right here. f of x is the y value. So, my first point, zero for x, one for y, so I'll write the points over here, and I'm going to write it at the same row where it came from. So we've got 0 for x, 1 for y. Next point, pi over 6, comma, square root 3 over 2, pi over 4, comma, 1 over square root 2, pi over 3, 1 half, pi over 2, 1. So we got five points to plot. I already have graph paper set up here. And let's see. We'll graph to the, we'll graph underneath actually. 
Yeah, we'll graph to the right here. So let's, I'm going to do my best to make this to scale. So I'm going to call this one. Eventually, we're going to need negative one for y values. Of course, there's a half. Uh, but we have one over square root two and square root three over two. So these two y values, I'm a little bit worried about where they are exactly. So what we're going to do is approximate them with decimals. We'll start with square root three over two it is approximately point. Ooh, it's point eight. I think it's point eight seven. And the other one over square root two, I think is 0.71. Now, I don't necessarily like writing in decimals, but it'll let me space things out pretty nicely. So there's one half, also known as 0 0.5. So 0 0.87 and 0 0.71, I'm gonna do my best to label those. 0.71 is gonna be right about there. It's gonna get difficult to label these. 0 0.87 is Pretty close to one. All right, so those are the values I'm gonna use right there, the Y values. Now my one looks way too big and out of place. One, all right. Now we're gonna worry about all of our X values. So our biggest one is uh, pi over two. The biggest one I wrote down is pi over two. Of course I can go past pi over two. So how big is pi over two? Pi over two is close to three halves. So this is how big one half is. So I'm gonna go three halves to the right. And remember, this is just approximations. It's technically a little bigger than three halves, but it's close enough. All right, and we're gonna go and fill in the rest. So we got zero, that's already zero, one. Um, this at the origin. So I'm going to try to figure out where in the world do these three angles line up. Now remember, this is only difficult because I'm not working in common denominator. So pi over 6 is, so that's pi over 12. I'm going to need 2 pi over 12. So we're going to need the third, the third, and also the half. We don't need to get down to 12, so we've done this a few times already. And I think I wrote this on the circle. Here's the angles you don't use. If you space this out evenly, cut it into pi over 12 size pieces, those are the two angles you don't actually, uh, that we don't use. We just got through double half angles, so you could figure the uh, cosine and sine of, uh, we did pi over 12, for example or negative pi over 12, you just use the uh, sum difference or double half. But I don't need to get that precise. Five points is plenty here. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and plot all the actual values. I'll make my pen a little bit thicker. Zero, one, pi over six, square root three over two, pi over four, one over square root two. Uh-oh, went that wrong. Location, pi over three, one half, pi over two. Oh, that was my spidey sense. I should be pi over two, zero. And what is the second part of a clueless method? So first, plot points from a table to you play connect the dots. So I know this is a game you learned a long time ago. Uh, you wanna play uh, connect the dots smoothly. So if you watch a kid play connect the dots, a lot of times there's these straight lines, so it would look something like that uh, if you did not do this smoothly. So it'd be a bunch of short, but straight line segments. So what we're gonna do is connect it with one curve and try to have uh, no corners in it or make it smooth. So here we go. 
that's pretty good right there that'll work all right so there's our graph from zero to pi over two now of course i can keep going past pi over two now it's a pi so spacing things out carefully there is pi or two pi over two and we're going to go all the way for one full period. 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. I could extend my table further, keep dropping down, getting more and more values. But what I'm going to do instead, uh, we're not completely clueless about the cosine function. So what happens to cosine after pi over 2? Let's draw a unit circle for a minute here. That's pi over 2. What happens over here? Remember, I only care about cosine theta. I don't really care about, I shouldn't use the letter x. I don't care about the thing that's over here. So what happens to cosine becomes negative. Cosine is negative in quadrant 2. And cosine is negative in quadrant 3. And quadrant 2 and 3 correspond to angles between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So this is that part of the graph we're gonna focus on. What happens? Cosine becomes negative. Where is cosine negative one? Cosine is negative one right here at pi. Cosine is zero at pi over two and three pi over two. And last up, what happens when we plug in two pi? We're back at positive one. I could get all the intermediate values uh, plotting the x values here, but again, we're not completely clueless, so we can just uh, connect the graph up. The y or the x value goes from zero, so I'm looking right here, zero to negative one in a smooth manner, and it goes there in a way that is very similar, looks very similar to the top curve. It just flips upside down. And then we smoothly connect from here to 3 pi over 2. And then connect up to 2 pi. All right, and this is uh, cosine y equals cosine of x, or f of x equals cosine of x, however you want to write it. One of the big takeaways from precalculus 1, or just functions and graphs in general, They're almost always written uh, in the form y equals f of x. So y is f of x, so I could write f of x or I could write y, whatever one I want to write, depending on the, what notation is better. So there's a lot more information on this graph than I want you to remember. So what I'm going to do is redraw the graph with less on it, uh, but very carefully labeling everything. So here we go. We have five points that I need to worry about. So that's a one. That'll be two pi. We're negative one in the middle and zero, zero, what I call the quarter points. So there's the half point or the midpoint right there at pi and the curve goes like this I normally recommend writing in pen when you do math because if you're in pencil you're tempted to spend too much of your time erasing it's messy uh, there's a eraser everywhere uh, and it takes a lot more time than it does if I make a mistake cross out start over uh, if I erase, that takes quite a bit more time. Uh, most of you live in the Northwest, so this is where paper, uh, at least most of our paper comes from. So go ahead and use extra paper and less erasers. So this is one period. Of course, that's one, negative one. This is what I want you to remember from the cosine function. So what we're going to do next is some transformations of this graph. 
and we're going to do it in a slightly, you could do all this in the uh, way that was taught in pre-calculus 1, if, if you learned pre-calculus 1 without a graphing calculator and you had to graph by hand. But what we're going to do is do things in a slightly different way. So I'm going to write down what I call the general form. in the right letter. So we go with A, F of, and we're going to use it. Let's go with a W here. Use H for the horizontal shift plus K. Oop, the graph of g of x. So we're talking about transformations here. And Formed. There's four transformations happening. I'm going to label the order is very important. So we're going to go stretch before you shift in this form. And we're going to do all of our horizontals first and the verticals at the end. So this order is very important. One thing to, uh, one easy way to remember this, you're going to stretch before you shift the way I'm teaching it. So our different, let's see. So step one, we're going to um, stretch horizontally. Now it looks like you're multiplying by W, you're gonna stretch by one over W. The way I want you to deal with this is, uh, this changes the period. So the best way, normally the period is two pi, and all we're gonna do is stretch it or multiply it by one over w, or you could think dividing it by w. And next up, we're gonna shift to the right h, and they call this a phase shift. I'm just gonna call it a horizontal shift. Uh, we're gonna go to the right H. It's a little bit strange. If H is negative, you're going to the right. If H is positive, you're going to the left. So these are both horizontal. And they're always, they're always the reverse of what they look like. And next up we got vertical. And these are usually easier because they're exactly what they look like. So third thing we're gonna do is stretch vertically by A. And this is also known as the amplitude. So the standard amplitude is one. It's a little bit strange. The amplitude is one on uh, without any transformations, even though the height is two. So it's a little bit strange. They count the amplitude is sort of half of the total 
the total change going from a peak to a valley. So this is technically 2a. So amplitude is only half of this change. And last up, we're going to shift by shift vertically, make sure it's a single arrow. So we're going to go shift up K. All right, that's a really fast review of uh, graphing from pre-calculus one class. Uh, we're going to graph everything in this form so that you won't have to worry. The order will always go one, two, three, four. There's not going to be any ambiguity. The only thing sometimes that can be tricky is you might need to factor out W. So I'm going to put a note here. W must be factored out. Um, and what it really affects is uh, really the H, and you'll see that in a little bit. So we'll do an example now. So we do not have all four <clears throat> of the uh, transformations happening. Which one do we not have? Looking at the general form, uh, our function, our base function is cosine x. Uh, we have to use cosine x, the only one we really know how to graph. And then we're going to look at the transformations happening. So I'm going to redraw what I remember about the cosine function. Starts at 1, ends at 1, negative 1. And of course, this period is 2 pi. There's going to be a stretch happening. So this is not, this is the graph of the cosine function with no transformations. This is not the graph of our function. We're going to apply the horizontal first. So the way we're going to get our new period, just remember p equals 2 pi over w. What is w here? It's a little bit strange. w is 1 half. And we might as well write out everything. h is 0. There is no horizontal shift. Uh, big A is negative 4. And k is negative 2. We got big A, k right there. So 2 pi over w is 2 pi over 1 half, which is 2 pi times 2 over 1. That's 4 pi. This is one of the questions I'm going to ask on a graph, a uh, graphing question on your midterm is what's the period? Uh, you're going to have to have the period correct if you want to graph this correctly. All right, we are ready to start our graph. So when I measure the period, it needs to be 4 pi. So how far sh over should I go? You can make up really your own scale here. I think I was going 3 and 3. So normally I was saying this is 2 pi. I can keep that scale going. Go another 3 and 3. And that's 4 pi. So 4 pi is our period. And now I'm going to graph a cosine with a 4 pi period. Not terribly exciting. Pretty much the exact same. That 2 pi is in the wrong spot. I mean, it's in the right spot, but I need to write on top of it. All right, so our cosine function just gets stretched out horizontally. Now, what function did we graph? I did not 
take into account the uh, any of the vertical stuff. So forget the A, forget the K. What I graphed was really just this function right there. So there's not the actual graph that I'm looking for, but it's a step in the right direction. So there's uh, the original graph. If I label the order here, this was our kind of our first iteration. Here's our second iteration. We're about to hit the third iteration. Now you can do uh, both vertical uh, transformations at the same time if you want to, as long as you stretch before you shift. What I'm going to do is do them separately, though. Uh, and I'm going to label, so the vertical transformation we did here, we actually stretched by two. That's We got twice as wide. Uh, next up, 